Moving on to school prayer, talking about the passage of a measure, inspirational messages to be delivered in public schools, allowing students to do this. Do you support the measure, or do you view it, as some do, as an intent to promote religion in public schools? I, I haven't. Um, there's only 1,500 bills out there. Uh, I haven't read all of them. The, uh, I have not, I've not seen exactly the way this works, so. Okay. I pray a lot. And a lot of people pray for me, and I'm very appreciative. <laughs> Question on jobs. You promised during your campaign 700,000 new jobs in seven years. Florida's unemployment has been reduced by 2%, but how can you uphold your promise with such a small reduction? I'm okay with, uh, I mean, look, would I like to have already done 700,000 jobs in one year? That'd be great. Uh, the, but we, we're on the right track. I mean, from 12 to 9.9, second fastest drop in the entire country, 141,500 private sector jobs, it's a good start. Uh, the, but, you know, there's a lot of work to do. All government does Sorry. is put this state in a better position than other places to do business. You do, you create all the jobs. And so, but what I see around the state, is people are more optimistic. They feel comfortable that our, their taxes are not going to be going up. They know we don't have budget deficits. They know we're not. I mean, if you if you look at history, our state. First off, our state was on credit watch a year ago. Uh, the we're now AAA. Uh, we're stable. And uh, while the federal government uh, uh, debt uh, credit rating went down, uh, the um, for 20 straight years, the state had uh, increased its debt by over a billion dollars a year. Uh, last fiscal last calendar year. It was reduced uh, over $500 million. Uh, this, our first fiscal year of uh, uh, Jeff Atwater and I being uh, CFO and, and governor, it's going to be down, I think, uh, over a billion dollars. So we're putting ourselves in, in, in the right position. Now, I'll still tell you, the problems, the financial issues we have in the state, citizens' insurance is a disaster. If we, if we have not solved it yet. Um, uh, and the pension plan is underfunded. Again, we're just jumping around to a variety of topics, trying to get to as many questions as we can. This deals with special taxing districts. What is your goal in reviewing special taxing districts, especially smaller community development districts? My, what I've tried to do is just go back and say, just like with regulation, just because we did something a certain way for 20 years doesn't mean we should do it the same way the next 20 years. So I just want to make sure that, that all the taxes where the state's involved that we look at those and say, is this something we can, should continue to do? Because that money comes out of somebody's pocket. And as we take money out of somebody's pocket, there's less money for the private sector, less money for families to buy food, buy cars, buy homes. And so I just want to make sure we, we review it. If it makes sense, we should continue it. Talking about high-speed rail, would you reconsider high-speed rail if federal dollars became available again? If, if uh, as I told the, uh, the federal government, if they want to build a high-speed project in Florida, have at it, uh, as long as it's not state dollars. The, uh, that project was going to be at least a billion dollars of uh, additional cost. And if you look at, in, you know, who knows if the numbers would have been bigger. The, the project was, they were going to give us $2.4 billion, but our cost would have been a billion dollars plus. If you look at California, they thought the cost was going to be in the $30 billion range, and now it's $100 billion. And, and it was, uh, and high-speed rail loses money, and historically has not made money. Uh, so I, if, I've, I've said all along, you know, no one, it's interesting, everybody said, oh, somebody else will do it. I've told people all over the country. I said, have I got a deal for you? <laughs> you, here, and here, just so you know, here was the deal. The federal government will give you, anybody in this room, I bet you can still get it. <laughs> so jump for this one. $2.4 billion. Now, you have to spend a billion dollars plus, and if California's right, the number would be bigger than that. Their, their project tripled in cost. So you have to spend that to finish it. If you look at history, you're not going to make any money. And if you finally get tired of losing money, you have to give the $2.4 billion back to the federal government. So I think the deal's still there. But I haven't seen anybody grab for it, run for it. On to immigration reform. Is immigration reform needed in Florida? If so, what would you like to see changed? If, if you think about what we ought to be doing, uh, look, we're a country of immigration. 
I mean, that's how, I mean, you know, we all, we're all here, you know, from somebody that come, came from some other country primarily, not, uh, so we are a country of legal, legal immigration. So here's what needs to happen. Step one, the federal government needs to secure borders. They need to come up with a immigration policy that people that live here understand, that people that want to come here understand. We also need to have a work visa program that doesn't put Florida businesses at an economic disadvantage to businesses in other countries. That doesn't make it, if we want more jobs here, if we put ourselves in an economic disadvantage, we will have fewer jobs. Now, in the meantime, if the federal government will not do their jobs, and if somebody's in our state illegally, we should be able to ask them, just like they ask, if you get, if you get stopped, you have to show your ID, you ought to be able, if you're doing something illegal, you should be able to show whether you're a legal resident or not of the, of the state. Agriculture. Agriculture is Palm Beach County's biggest industry. Do you have any initiatives currently right now at the governor's office to help farmers prosper? I think the biggest, the biggest issues, uh, and by the way, the Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putnam is doing a very good job. Uh, and is very focused on making sure that, that you know, the agriculture community continues to prosper. So I think the, probably the biggest uh, issue that, that uh, my office has dealt with is the numeric nutrient issue. Uh, so we, um, I th I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, we have a, uh, well, the, the bill we passed this year, which, uh, which we are, we have very stringent water quality standards in our state. Uh, the goal is to make sure that we continue to monitor our water quality rather than the federal government. Uh, so we passed a good bill. I'm hopeful that the EPA will uh, agree with us. Should the Sunshine State have an aggressive policy for support of solar energy? The, it depends on when it's free. The, uh, I, th I think that I think we need to. With, with, I mean, it's, it's energy overall, so it's not just solar. But let's look. We need to become ind energy independent. You know, we're sitting here relying on foreign oil of countries that don't like us a lot. So we've got to figure out how we can become as energy independent as possible. Uh, now. We've got to do it because you know a lot of things you talk about oil drilling. I mean, we've got to do it when we know we're comfortable, it's safe. Uh, if you've spent any time at the Panhandle and look at what the for not getting oil there, uh, we sure impacted our economy there. So we've got to be very cautious. But now all the alternatives, whether it's solar, we've got to continue to look at it. But do it when we can afford it. When we we figured out that it's less expensive uh, than the existing cost of natural gas and things like that. We'll wrap it up with a couple more questions. Do you plan to run for a second term? Yes. <laughs> and last. I enjoyed the pro. You know, I'll tell you. Let me tell you about. I've never run for office before, so uh, so everybody says it's it's going to be horrible. And you know, there's there's things that the only things that really are bad are things that adversely impact your family. So when people were mean to my daughter or mean to my wife, that, that was bad. But the opportunity to travel and meet, I don't know, you know all the people I met across the state. I, did, I basically, from April 9th to November 2nd, I worked every day. I didn't take a day off, and I probably did seven events a day. So, and I probably, on average, had 100 to, I mean, the small events would have 50. The big events would have you know, 700 people, so 100 people. So I met a lot of people across the state, and I, I went every, I'm pretty sure I, I hit every county, and, I, and it feels like I hit every town. Um, <laughs> this state is blessed with really neat people. Uh, it's people that care about the state. It's people that care about their families. It's, it's you know, you, it, it is the most rewarding, exp I tell people this all the time, it's probably the most rewarding experience you can ever have is to run for office. Now, there's, there's the negative part of it and, and things like that, but the positive part, you get to meet a lot of people and you sure figure out what your positions are because you get asked them all the time. If it's something you haven't, you haven't thought about, you will think about it because you'll get asked two or three or four times until you do figure out what your position is. So it was, it was, uh, I, I enjoyed it. My family enjoyed it. We, um, the last 10 days of the primary and the last 10 days of the general, we rented um, sort of like those rock star buses. Uh, and uh, so my, uh, my wife traveled, my daughters traveled, and my mom traveled. They got to sit at the back of the bus and tell jokes. And I got to sit at the front of the bus and answer questions by the media. Uh, so they had a very enjoyable time. 
and uh, and they got to they. But it was it was a lot of fun. I this job is a rewarding job if you like people and you want to try try to have a positive impact. Uh, if you don't like people and you don't want to try to make change, it might be pretty tough. Uh, but this is a this is a very rewar rewarding job. It's um, you get to. Does that mean I'm done? <laughs> no, keep going. You're okay. <laughs> you, no, you, you really do get to try to try to make a positive impact. And uh, you know, as um, Ken said, trying to be bold. You know, there's the po some people. Their bold is positive, and some people, when you say you're doing bold things, that's exactly the opposite of they want, what they want you to do. I thought about that when you're saying the prayer. But no, I'm I'm going to run for re-election, um, and uh, and I enjoy this, and I'm going to do the best I can every day. So. so let me, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. And uh, now, Wendy, are you going to continue to make sure I come back? <laughs> yes, that was so, our, that's our last much. question. You will, you will agree to I, continue the annual yeah. tradition to come back? I love being here. It's Great. Nice. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, thank you for coming. <laughs>